Hi there folks, uh, back again for another video. Um, in this one, I guess we're looking at this a little bit more as a kind of state of play style affair, I suppose. Just kind of looking at where things are in the world for MESBG, Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, and where I think things could end up going in the near future. So I was watching the uh, battle streams in Middle Earth, um, over the weekend and one thing that Damien and Steve talked about was the health of the game because you can see it right there actually <laughs> but one of the things that they talked about in the there and back again stream was that there was a period where the game was effectively dead for all intents and purposes it was, it was very hard to get your hands on the miniatures it was very hard to get your hands on the rules everything was essentially being run by community efforts and um, there was no real support from Games Workshop and there was almost just a smattering of stuff coming out surrounding the Hobbits when a lot of people thought we were going to be getting a lot of stuff. I mean, I think a lot of people know that there were plenty of problems with the production of the Hobbit and that sort of had a knock-on effect with what Games Workshop could and couldn't do and all that kind of thing. Um, and it's a story that's been told by many people as well before anyway. Uh, but... You know, there was definitely a period for the Middle Earth Strategy Battle game where it was really hard to see a future for it. Uh, and then at the start of this year, so at the start of 2023, I did this video, which you can see here. And this was kind of like a what's next for MESPG in 2023 and my thoughts on where they could go. So I talked about Casa Doom. I talked about Arnor and the opportunities that could present itself there. Um, I also had a look at where they could go with The Last Alliance, which I think a lot of people think should still be coming sometime soon. We'll see, I suppose. Um, and also the opportunity that could be afforded with the advent of what was happening with the Two Towers and you know anniversaries for the Return of the King and all that kind of things as well. And it always felt like there was things... There were problems in the background that were making it so that progress couldn't be made with the development of the game and and adding new stuff to it. But one of the things that Damien and Steve talked about in their video that I thought was really fascinating was the fact that sometimes when you don't get much, it can also sometimes be a good thing. Like the game is in one of the healthiest states that it's been in for a very long time. I was looking through the, uh, the Games Workshop web store, as you can see here, and yeah, we have the Battle of Osgiliath set, which came out towards the end of last year and has been massive. Uh, I know a lot of people have picked it up and been really excited by what this allows, uh, well, what this does for people diving into the game and what it allows for them to, to, to have a go at. We also had all of the battle hosts that were released as well, so there were more entry points into the game than we've had before. It's a decent set as well, which came with that really nice new terrain. We also had the miniatures for Faramir, Madril and Damrod. And then the new one for Gothmog as well, leading the way on the back of his warg. So it was, you know, not a set that was a slouch by any stretch of the imagination. It was a pretty decent set, and I have it. And I had a really good fun time painting it all up. And now I have effectively a nice little Mordor and a, and a Gondor army to start building on, which is really, really cool. So it's not like the game isn't getting support or hasn't had support. Um, but it does feel like we're sort of drifting a little bit at the moment, which I think is something that is worth exploring in here. So, you know, loads and loads of options still available across metal and fine cast and regular plastic kits for good and evil. Plenty of different things there. And even for The Hobbit as well, you can still get your hands on a hell of a lot of the models, albeit a lot of them are in the fine cast, which, you know, not a lot of people like. Um, me included, but you know, they are still there. They're great. And there's still plenty of options for you to get started with terrain. Obviously some of the Gondor stuff is um, not available online at the moment, but I'm sure they'll be coming back when they get around to doing more production of their plastic stuff again. Things get sorted out with the warehouse and all that kind of thing. And then you've even got all these different supplements to dive into. If you wanted to play out stuff in Gondor, you've got that. If you wanted Rohan, you've got that. If you wanted to dive into the Skyrim of the Shire, you can do that. There's the Defense of the North, the Fall of the Necromancer. The Quest of the Ringbearer is just an amazing book as well. And all of this stuff has, has, has come out and provided people with a lot of options for playing MESPG on the tabletop. Now, one of the things a lot of people were disappointed about was that, and, you know, I can see why, 
was that the only model that we got announced at Warhammer Fest, which is meant to be a huge celebration of everything the Games Workshop do, was this um, Get Off the Road diorama, which also felt like it was a little bit late coming again. Could be to do with the pandemic and everything else like that. And all the is- other issues they've been having with warehouse and production and and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we got a resin set that came with Carmel there at the back on his rather awesome looking steed and an awesome looking ring wraith. And each of the hobbits also looking great and a very nice diorama base. But that was kind of it. And a lot of people were like, okay, so, you know, you've you've had this big surge of excitement for the game once more. We've got that new starter set. We've got people diving in and playing it again, picking up loads of models, scouring through eBay and and all sorts of different places like Troll Trader and stuff, to try and get their hands on miniatures and build up armies and things. And the tournament scene's still as good as it ever was. Uh, you know, from what I've heard from people talking about it in various videos, everyone seems to be t- attending tournaments both at Warhammer World and, and elsewhere in the community and having lots of fun with it and still playing lots and lots of the game, both here in the UK but also around the world as well. People in America, people in Australia and New Zealand too. Let's not forget about them. <laughs> they do effectively live in Middle Earth now, I guess, I suppose. But, uh, you know, it's not like the game is uh, sort of languishing and dying or anything people are still really excited about it and having fun with it and maybe in some cases it's good to have a little bit of a lull so that you can actually get through painting some of your uh, collection and stuff but i know obviously people would really like to see more stuff coming up and so that kind of led me to thinking about where we could go um i don't think we're going to be seeing anything for middle earth for the rest of 2023 now um, I think we're in a position with everything else that's been going on with the release of Warhammer 10th edition that we're probably going to end up seeing Warhammer the Old World occupy the latter half of this year and the beginning of next in 2024. And then there's even uh, Legions Imperialis, which needs to come out as well, which is another small game from a specialist side of things. And you've got uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar 2nd Edition next year as well, kind of uh, looming, well not 2nd Edition, but the next edition of that looming somewhere in the darkness, um, ready to land with a big bang and hopefully draw a lot more people into that as well. And so, to be honest, where is the space for something you could do for Middle Earth? Um, I think there are still, I think there's still positive signs in my mind for us to get one of the supplements that I talked about in this video. Um, I think what one of the things that always seems to come up when people talk about these different eras and and stuff like that, and I know that Rob Alderman was in a uh, uh, an interview with somebody who was talking a little bit about Middle Earth and, and that kind of thing, and they asked him about things like Khazad-dûm and Arnor and the Last Alliance, and he was like, we'd love to do that kind of thing. We just have to, you know... Well, he'd love to do that kind of thing, not we. He said he'd love to do that kind of thing. And so that feels like it hits on that positivity note that a lot of people have felt over the last little while, that there is still something brewing. And again, this is something that was brought up in that Battle Streams in Middle Earth um, video. Uh, is that, and it's well worth going to watch. I will link it down below. <laughs> is that... Um, you know, people are still working on something in the background at Games Workshop. They've been advertising for new people to come and work as part of that department. So it's not like they're letting it go or anything like that. People are still developing something in the background. Just what it is, I don't know, uh, I guess. One of the things that came out of Warhammer Fest that was quite interesting was that when they were talking about the Middle Earth strategy battle game on stage, they said that they would love to talk about stuff or they wanted to talk about things but the opportunity for them to do so was fairly limited by something and a lot of people took talk took that to mean that um maybe they were renegotiating the license or something like that uh and a lot of other people thought maybe it's something to do with amazon and the rings of power and all that kind of thing now i would love to see something in that regard Um, seeing Second Age stuff with a different spin would be really awesome. Um, I love the idea of seeing where they develop things and where they take things in terms of the aesthetic of the miniatures to match up with what's happening in Rings of Power to tell a little bit of a different story. 
that's not necessarily linked to what they've already done though so it would be something that would take a lot of finagling i would imagine technical word that finagling uh, and so it's it's something that i i feel puts things sort of up in the air for middle earth at the moment um it could just be again something that was raised on the last stream it could just be that uh they were just having to renegotiate things for logos and graphic design and when graphic design is involved and you have to sort out pictures and you have to sort out titles and all the other things that come with copyrights it can be a pain in the ass and it can mean that sometimes you don't get to do things at the speed that you want to um, which could be why we only got this and we didn't get anything necessarily for the two towers in the same uh, way that we saw things like Battle in Balin's Tomb come out as that little fun box game uh, for the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, but as I say, it's not like the game is lacking in support. There's all the books there. They're all available. All of the battle hosts exists. Loads of the models are routinely available. They tend to go through big periods of making things available via a made-to-order system, so you can get your hands on all the miniatures that you need to start playing the game if you've missed out in previous iterations. Lots of quirky and weird things are available for you to pick up as well. I mean, I don't know how many people need Dead Marsh Spectres and Castellans of Dolgadur, for example, but they're there and people can pick them up and, and add them into the mix for army um, for good or evil and all that kind of stuff as well. And even if you're playing the Hobbit side of things, you can still get access to a lot of the fine cast stuff, a lot of the plastics. And there's even more over on the Forge World websites that's been done over the years as well. Um, so, you know, stuff is still happening. Um, is it happening at the pace that I would like? No, not necessarily. I would love to have seen 2023 being something that was focused around the stuff that I talked about in this video. But as we near the tail end of it, as I say, I think we might be seeing ourselves potentially having to survive, subsist through the winter and uh, come back in 2024 and have a think about where things would go. I might be surprised. Um, the Warhammer preview for this coming weekend doesn't talk about Middle Earth stuff. It talks about um, uh, the old world and what's happening with Warhammer there, as well as 140,000, Age of Sigmar and Kill Team. So there's no mention of Middle Earth at that point, but you never know. As we move towards the tail end of the year, maybe we'll get another preview sort of near enough to Christmas time and we'll start to see what their plans are for the future. Um, as I say, would love to see one of these books come back. I know that I talked about the idea of something for Casa Doom and Arnold. I think those would be amazing ideas uh the last alliance just feels like it's there ready waiting to happen but with what amazon's doing and all that kind of stuff maybe that's stepping on their toes and they can't really work out how to navigate that murky water legally i suppose um and then you know maybe we'll see something else entirely maybe we'll see more box games maybe we'll see just a couple of additional forge world releases there are still occasionally um gaps for them to plug and uh, models from the past that could be brought back and all that kind of thing um, but yeah it'll be very fascinating to see where they go with things as we move towards 2024 so I guess this was just kind of like a little bit of a rambling thoughts thing to be honest um, I remember I, I was inspired by the, the video that uh, the, the lads streamed yesterday and um, I was looking back at my video that I'd done this one here from uh, 2023 and kind of what we got and and the state of the models and things like that that you could get a hold of and things um and i just wanted to put down some interesting thoughts there as well and sort of echo what they'd done i suppose as well so yeah i don't think there's any necessarily uh, there's i don't think there's necessarily an issue with middle earth strategy battle game i think still things are still going to happen i think we're going to see a lot more stuff coming out from forge world and stuff over the next little while just maybe small special projects that are sort of centered around particular characters or maybe dioramas and that kind of thing especially in the run-up to christmas and then i think 2024 when things have settled down after they've released allegiance imperialis after they've released the old world and got that started again maybe we'll start to see things moving in a, in a nice direction when it comes to middle earth on the tabletop but you can still play the game you can still get the models you can still take part in tournaments you can still get all of the supplements so it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, yeah, so still a really fun game to get swept off into, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, 
uh, that was just my little bit of a, an update and thoughts on where things are when it comes to the Middle Earth strategy battle game at the moment. It's not dead. It's not going anywhere. And uh, the chances of seeing something fun in 2024 are once again high on my agenda. And I will probably do another video similar to the one you see here. <laughs> uh, talking about all that once we know a little bit more perhaps as well. But yeah. Uh, I'm going to move on, get started on another video, dive into some more hobby perhaps, uh, and uh, until next week, I shall uh, I shall see you. Make sure to get stuck into the comments down below, like, share, subscribe, tell me your own thoughts on the state of MESBG and what you think of it at the moment. Uh, are you just getting in for the first time? Uh, is it something that you've returned to after a long while? Do you still keep just trucking along with it uh, and enjoying it for what it is? Uh, let me know in the comments because I'd really like to uh, hear what you have to say. All right. I'm going to move on. I'm going to stop rambling now, and I'll uh, talk to you folks in another video very soon. Bye.